In this lesson, we're going to be talking about charts and graphs. Charts and graphs allow us to display data in an organized manner. We will take a look at both charts and graphs by creating a basic VI. On our front panel, we will start off by placing a chart. It can be found in the Functions palette under the Graph sub-palette or in the Quick Drop menu. Select a waveform chart. Now on our block diagram, let's encapsulate the chart within a while loop. We will also connect a random number generator to it and place a wait timer. Now we will create a stop button and run our program. Notice how the chart updates one point at a time. However, previous points are not forgotten. This is because the chart has a fixed history called the buffer. We can modify this by right clicking on the chart and selecting Chart History Length. Let's set it to 10 and see what happens. You will see what appears to be a scrolling action once it reaches 10. It forgets the last value and updates it with a new one. This is called a strip chart. We can change this behavior by right clicking on the graph update mode. From here, we can either make it a scope chart or a sweep chart. When a scope chart has reached its buffer length, the display will clear and start again. When a sweep chart has reached the end of its buffer length, it will begin redrawing the chart, but will only replace one point at a time. You can adjust other things such as scales, visible items, and coloring by right clicking on the chart and going through the various menus. Graphs are very similar to charts, but have one very big difference they don't store history. This is why a graph expects an array, which would be its entire set of data. Let's place a graph next to our chart. If we quickly connect the graph to the random number generator, we will get a broken arrow. This is because the graph expects an array of y values. To get an array of y values for our graph, we can place it outside of our while loop. Now connect the graph to the random number generator. We still have a broken wire, but if we right click on the terminal where the wire exits the loop, we can enable indexing. This will index our generated random numbers, and when our while loop stops, the array of values will be passed to our graph. Now if we run our program, we notice the graph on the outside of the loop doesn't update until the loop stops. In this lesson, we learned about charts and graphs. We learned that the fundamental difference between charts and graphs are that charts have a history and graphs do not.